Hello, hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the In Your Element show. I'm Artis Kadu, founder and CEO of Element 451. And with me today is, um, as always, my co-host, Aaron Newton. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Artis. How's it going? Doing great. Doing great. It's um, It's been a incredible um, week so far. Uh, it seems that October... Um, we has been like, we're seeing a lot of activity and, um, on all fronts and today, uh, hopefully we can kind of get to some of the, uh, some of the happenings or some of the news, at least, uh, what's happening in industry. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll let you lead this one. Um, right. you've been kind of instrumental in, in kind of putting together some of these, um, uh, some of this, this press and PR as we've, um, we've done here at Element. So I'll let you lead. All right. Thanks, Artis. Um, so today I have a, a trend story that was in the Heckinger Report, and it's about the just rapid increase of spending by higher education on marketing and advertising. And this is coincides with a steep decline in enrollment. So the article really talks about how schools are recognizing that they need to up their game for marketing and advertising. And, um, you know, you and I actually met working at a university and yeah. um, the article mentions, you know, kind of jokingly that the M word that in uh, higher ed, there's kind of a resistance to this idea of marketing and advertising. And that has really shifted, according to this um, journalist, John Marcus, who I know that, that you actually spoke with and you actually shared your did, insight yeah. yeah in this article so this would be great to kind of uh get your take uh firsthand on what does this mean what are you seeing in that shift to marketing and advertising being um you know not just acceptable but vital to the health of colleges and universities yeah, I think there was a couple of numbers thrown out there that it takes anywhere between four hundred to six hundred dollars in marketing spent from any institution to recruit that every student every year. Uh, and if you think about it, um, you know that's that's kind of on the low end for you know, and and it's averages out. But some institutions that have um, higher, uh, less demand in programs, they're spending probably a lot more. Uh, programs like MBA programs or some of the graduate programs, which are very saturated, they're spending even more marketing uh, dollars out there. And then uh, again, if you're working with uh, online program providers that are coming in, you're spending a lot more because of a revenue share or something along those lines. But the trend essentially has become really interesting. And we've seen this um, happening over and over. And uh, there's, there's two things that are happening. Obviously, the uh, the need for schools to differentiate themselves and to get to the students like the game has changing right the game is changing drastically um, you're getting to uh, getting to high schools or getting through counselors or getting through the the regular mechanisms that um, that colleges university used to do recruiting um, there was a large population of, of the class coming through those different channels however now the student has all of the power and and they are expecting the interactions and communications with schools to change very drastically they're expecting they're at the driver's seat so they're not no longer working or or perhaps they're not getting influence as much by their counselor or by someone else they're getting a lot of influence based on um you know their own research on these online tools so schools need to differentiate themselves not only on terms of the communications they're sending the personalized communication but also moving digitally right so how do you move to a digital platform where everybody looks the same and everybody is the same right so your your you know your email is you know getting the space at the same time and attention and um, an opportunity as any other anybody else is but the difference now is the brand right so branding has become a, a big one as well um, and that's kind of the trend that we're seeing schools are spending more 
because they need to do that. They're competing for attention. They're competing for students' attention and, and eyeballs. And in order to do that, they need to obviously spend more. They don't have a lot of in-house expertise. So they are going out and contracting with agencies or, or enrollment um, marketing agencies. And, and that's another, I would say, I would say a problem, but it is another uh, kind of avenue that schools are spending. So in the past, the, the bar was relatively low. So now as your neighbor goes in and says, okay, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and buy more names, or I'm going to go ahead and kind of work with a enrollment marketing firm and their strategies change. Now they're competing for those same students that you are, you feel pressure, and then you're going to do those programs as well to kind of increase your applications, increase uh, your yield. So that's kind of the, um, the game that's happening. But understanding that students are still at the driver's seat. We talked about last week how um, the number of, number of schools that students are applying to has increased and the number of the yield has gone down drastically. Um, so that is going to be, you know, a big factor in pool is smaller. They have more options. Well, how do you recruit them? You need to spend more money to get in front of them. So it's kind of a chicken and egg type of thing. But obviously, you can't spend more money because you need um, you need to balance your budgets. Well, you know what ends up happening is that the schools who have deeper pockets they are going to be you know advantaged in this digital uh, recruiting world. Obviously we like to think that, you know, through technology, we can bring that cost down drastically. And that's what we're doing at Element. Uh, and by using smart technology and by using students' behavior, um, we can kind of get better at that and it can automate a lot of those things and bring that cost drastically down and kind of level the playing field. But um, that takes a leap from the school side and it takes... Um, you know, takes a new way of thinking about it rather than saying, I'm going to go head to head and compete with the NYUs of the world um, in terms of their, their budget and their marketing. Uh, you just need to do it smarter and, and um, you just need to be smarter about it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of kind of being smarter about it, because, you know, there are some schools, they just, they can spend and spend and spend, and there's going to be smaller schools. They're just going to be outspent. Yeah. Um, I know for ourselves, we we are digital marketers of Element, and some of the ways that we think about going head to head with our co competitors who might have bigger budgets is that experience part, which we throw that term around a lot. But what does that mean to actually be provide a better experience? for a student. So I'm thinking the parallel in our world is we talk about friction a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's not enough to just have great content. It's that actual journey of, okay, you seem interesting. I want to check out your school and all of that. How do you think um, schools approach that? Or is that in their mix? Yeah. Um, so branding is one part of it and you can't really control a lot of that because certainly as the, on the admission side, even though we've seen schools uh, house the marketing uh, component in the admissions and kind of becoming more of a, a one unit or being one person being responsible, still the branding component is such a huge part and, and nobody really knows how to even value what the ROI on that is. However, uh, the friction that you're talking about, so take away the branding, then um, kind of engagement and communication and, and kind of the, the work to get there becomes more, I wouldn't say transactional, but becomes more uh, about the, how fast you're reacting to, to that student, right? So um, how are you engaging with that student? What's your... Uh, you know, are you getting to them really quick? Uh, what are your policies? So rather than being institution-centric institution in terms of your processes and, and how you're 
you're setting up your communications flows and everything and, and kind of making the students fit into your processes, those schools that are becoming more agile and those schools that are kind of changing their processes to fit how the students are expected, expecting them to behave, those are the ones that are benefiting tremendously right now, right? So we go back to that friction. Well, friction, all it is, it means that there's some misunderstanding between what the student wants and then what you think they want, right? So if we get closer and closer and closer, then there is no friction, right? It's all about that, that you know, intent. So if we can provide that student what they need, or if we can show them the value of, their, of your institution right away and, and make that journey easier for them, then you win. So that's what friction is all about. But it's very hard because we're still expecting students to follow our processes. And that is the core fundamental um, change that we, we need to make happen, right? It's, it's all about change our mentality. It's all about the student now and they're in the driver's seat and we just need to adopt to their, um, you know, to, to what they need and, and right. how they're, you know, how they're interacting and how they're engaging and, right. and be a lot in a lot of different channels and get to them right away and, and make sure that you're giving them personalized um, content about them. It's all about them, right? Everybody wants to be felt like they're the only one in the world that's communicating with you and that you're interacting with. Right, right. And in, and in some ways, you, you know, if you're a smaller, more nimble, smaller team school, you kind of have an advantage because you can, you don't have to go through seven layers of management to be like, you know what, I think this form is way too long. I think students don't need to fill it out and or whatever it is that's kind of getting in the student's way, you can come up with a new process that's more like what, you, you know, students expect and see every day and almost every other aspect besides their higher education uh, pursuit. Yeah. So, what, so I'm going to give one, one little snippet. So we're, we're doing some marketing campaigns on our side and I'm getting uh, sometimes the email addresses that we have that we sent out are, are centralized to the admissions office or a particular person and I'm getting the auto replies. And I can't believe that still to this day, we have to put in these auto replies that someone will get back to you in two to three business days. I mean, wow, like two to three business and you have to specify what a business date means. Right, 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 right. Yeah. It, it's yeah. in the email. I mean, uh, it's like, how, how is that student centric? Yeah. Not, it's not at all. So I have hope. I've seen, <laughs> I remember yes. back in the day uh, to learn about what courses and majors were available at school, you had to read their entire course catalog. So we've come a long way. The schools can do it. Um, and hopefully we can help them. Yeah, exactly. And, and this is what these articles are, are kind of getting to the point of, right? So it's not necessarily about, um, what we need to do differently or like it's not necessarily about like a, any big news revelations it's about taking a moment realizing that this is a problem and different institutions have to deal with that problem differently and they have different resources but we realizing the problem is it's the first step and then knowing how to you know fix it is is, is next right and that gets us, it's a nice little segue into the actual, uh, let me just move my screen over a little bit. I'm showing my age with my, uh... I need a, a pro class <laughs> on screen sharing. Yeah, it's trying to um, it's trying to make it fit within our. So maybe if you make it smaller, actually, it'll probably yeah. work better. It's counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. Well, this there article. We there we go. Um, this is in Destination CRM, so it's a outlet that talks about 
CRMs and technology. And this particular article is talking about, okay, so you, you have your technology, you're gathering insights about customers, and it takes more of a broad view of all types of companies. Um, and so how do you actually do something with that data to actually improve your customer success relationships? And um, artists, you gave some insight into what's happening in higher ed on this topic. So I thought maybe we could hear from you right now and directly and talk about some of the things that Element is doing and some of the things that, um, you know, our higher higher ed institutions uh, partners are doing as well. Yeah, I mean, we're we're seeing um, higher education usually lags behind a little bit in terms of the consumer trends. And this is one of those cases where um, we're trying to get ahead of uh, where we need to be in the next couple of years, right? Uh, looking from the consumer side, we are looking at schools as um, obviously a lot of them are revenue generator. They're uh, tuition driven institutions. So looking at it as a as a business and, you know, it becomes at the end, it becomes a technology business, right? So it's like, how do you attract students and how do you keep those students around? And, and, and you got to look at data and uh, it's got to be very, very uh, data driven, right? So, you know, schools, just like organizations are moving towards more data driven, but not data driven in terms of looking at reports, but more on how do we use data to take actions towards um, you know, uh, ma making sure that that student is moving through the funnel or moving through towards their target goal and kind of leveraging that data. So, um, you know, we at Element are looking at the same exact problem. And we talked about last week how uh, enrollment models, oh, actually one of the podcasts in, in your Element podcast, uh, uh, the latest episode there, it talks about how enrollment models over COVID have, bro have been broken. And then that's just kind of what we talked a little bit about as well before. So rather than looking at this really long predictive models about students, we need to look at their actions. So taking that data, looking at their actions and seeing what they're doing and kind of adopting to that becomes really important. So that's what we're doing at Element, right? We're we're kind of bubbling up insights about that student's interactions and, and kind of baking that in and kind of bubbling up and saying, okay, you need to interact with the student this way, or you need to uh, call this person, or you need to engage with them. So it becomes a same pattern for any type of you know stage in the funnel or any uh, as part of their journey. So that's kind of the way that we're we're kind of thinking about it. And um, you look at it from the business side, it's the same thing, right? It's like, well, how do you connect with your customer? How do you uh, engage with them? How do you uh, make sure that you're looking and you're getting, gathering that data, but then making that actionable as well? And higher ed is no different, right? We're seeing all kinds of data products coming online. Um, those data products are being baked into the delivery technology now. So rather than it being separate, they're now part of your CRM. They're part of your SIS or mostly part of your CRM because that's how you were communicating with that. But that's um, basically going forward, we are changing the way that, you know, we're using. So in order to become more predictable and in order to become and to kind of amplify the work that we're doing, we're going to let our systems use a lot of dictate or, or kind of give us more insights on what we need to do. So rather than having, let's say, Mary, the, the counselor, um, look at thousands of students and kind of figure out how to prioritize their day, the the system will let her know, hey, here is the top 15 students that you should talk to today. This is nothing new. It's, it's, it's been exactly the same thing on the, um, on the business side. And we've seen what, what's called sales enablement tools come to market. And it's all about the interactions. It's all about 
Uh, when was the last time you called them? When was the last time they did something? When was the last time they, what kind of contact they interacted with? Exactly the same thing here. Sorry for, for the ramble, but you know, this is one of those fundamental um, shifts again. Change, talked about before, changing the student has all the power. Well, the consumer has all the power in here, right? So if you're not delivering to them, it's the same thing. But in order to deliver what they want, you need to understand what they want. And that's where the data component comes in. So you need to use that data, your interactions with them, um, uh, their interactions with you in order to better personalize those communications with them and, and let your systems kind of figure out who you should talk to as that digital um, plane becomes wider and wider and you can now target more more folks and more more students as well. Right. Yeah. And it's just, it's a lot, uh, if you work with a CRM and do any kind of sales or recruiting, it's a lot to have your brain doing the strategy and the collecting the data and the execution all at one time. So exactly. CRMs come in and the good ones like ours, right? Um, will do a lot of that work for you. They're behind the scenes collecting all that data and saying, okay, well, so-and-so from Michigan is interested in these programs and they were reading every email and you haven't sent an email in three days and they would love to hear from you. Um, <laughs> and so and you can take that action and you can do it, you know, the system can identify similar students like that. So you're doing mm -hmm. it at scale. Um, exactly. And I think another key thing is, you know, one place to have all your data otherwise keeping everything connected and then trying to extrapolate insights is incredibly difficult every little like you know the internet tubes that are all connected <laughs> that's all just a point for failure really you got to keep an eye on all those tubes so yeah yeah so we've talked about internet 1.0 2.0 and now so i mean there is a radical change also in terms of how we're communicating you know we're talking about different platforms and um there is it's an interesting one because there's the web 3.0 that's being um uh coined and um we're talking about you know blockchain technology and you know all of that stuff but then also this uh these platforms uh that allow you to be present in, in, in VR and virtual reality. And as we move more towards those things, it's going to be even more, um, even harder to, uh, to get somebody's attention. Right. So um, we're in such, I mean, I, I love where we are right now in terms of technology as, as we kind of move forward and kind of looking at new ways of adopting new platforms and getting smarter about data. Um, we've said this before, you know, the next, five years or 10 years, it's all about that who, whoever is really good at the data game and, and leveraging and utilizing that, they're going to be the ones that are going to be way ahead. And um, we're seeing it every single day. That trend has accelerated and it's embedded now in every single sector. And higher education is way behind in terms of leveraging data. And um, that's 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 got to change, and that's something that we are focusing on quite a bit on. Um, but I'm I'm really really excited about it because there's just so much um, there's so much that we can do, and it's all in the benefit of not just uh, using that data to benefit the institution, but to benefit the student as well, right? Right. right. So it's all about that that student at the end of the day. Um, you know, we talk about how can we, um, you know, how can we uh, um, have students graduate, right? Well, we can leverage data to, uh, to kind of get ahead about their, uh, you know, they haven't showed up to their classes, if they're at risk or interaction. It's exactly the same thing, right? So, so using that, but what you said rings home. If you don't have a unified data platform, if you don't even have a unified way to, to gather all that, then it becomes really easy to 
uh, go astray and say, hey, I have some data in Google Spreadsheets. I have some data in my SIS. I have some data here. So siloing, it's still a problem. It is not a technology issue. It is a people and organization issue. Um, technology is helping, but ultimately it's, uh, it's going to be um, it's going to be up, it's going to be up to the organizations to kind of think differently and, and kind of move towards that. Right. And no more two to three business days, you know, because you don't have to check Please. your 15 different platforms. You just go one place and like, OK, I, I, I am prepared to answer your question. So, yes. yes, we're getting there. We're getting there. Well, thank you for thanks, everyone, for joining. Hopefully you got some uh, uh, interesting commentary and insights from from this news um, article, uh, news stories session. We. Um, we will see you again on Monday. Um, we don't have a theme that we can announce yet, but there'll be some cool stuff that we're going to show you on the, on the platform as well. Um, our introduction to video last, you know, earlier in the week, um, that was something that, um, was really interesting and, uh, we'll continue the, the, the trend with, you know, partners and integrations and kind of best of breed and bringing those into element as well. Sounds good. I'm looking forward to it. Take care, everybody. Have a good day. See ya. Bye, Aaron. Bye.